Hi guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Myself, Keith and Simon, and Keen Menton here as usual. Uh, Keen, another brilliant weekend, I have to say, of football. Well, actually, when I say another, I don't think we enjoyed the weekend before as well as we did this weekend, I think. There were yeah. some very interesting matches, a lot of entertaining matches. I suppose we have to start off with the cup game, Keen. At lone four, Shelburne won. Uh, Dean George take a bow because, you know, he scored a hat-trick. He hadn't scored in 16 matches, Keen, for Athlone. He gets three and one. And some of them were crackers. Two of them were crackers. Like, the first one he tucked away nicely. The other two were crackers. Uh, we have to give him a bit of credit here, don't we? <laughs> Look, Dean, I thought, played really well in the game. I thought, I thought Athlone were just up for it. They just wanted them more. Mm. Uh, they're not. They're nowhere near the quality of Shelbourne. Mm. Uh, they're nowhere near the quality of anybody in the Premier Division, really. So they just wanted this and they wanted us so much and uh, Shell won't just didn't turn up and like I said, we've seen the interviews with Ian Morris and like that's a little bit worrying. A uh, little bit worrying from that end of things. I think considering Jazz Jazz wasn't playing, then he's he's it's behind the scenes information that he doesn't want to give out and you know whether look. Okay, he could have easily said I had a little knock. I, I personally think it's probably down to contracts. Uh, considering like maybe another club wants him, he's one of the most he's one of the most talented wingers in the league. So I would say like players now at this stage of the season are obviously our contracts. Their contracts finished. Obviously they're getting paid and they're still insured and they've signed the extensions a little bit, but. Like, we've heard rumours of, let's say, Dara Markey with Pats going to Sligo, and, you know, he's not in the squad all of a sudden, and you don't know what the story is there. But what I'm saying is, is this what, yeah, is, is this what's going on here? I'm, like, Are you people... a bit surprised, Keane, that, um, I guess, Ian Morris was so honest about it, as opposed to saying, oh, yeah. just or something, or... No, like, I think the fans deserve a bit of honesty, and... He was, he was, in fairness, he was speaking, I think, right from the heart in that interview. And I know Ian very well, and, you know, he was hurting, and he was hurting bad. And it's not nice to see a young manager, an up and manager, on the floor like that after a result. And, you know, like, yeah, I get rivalry aside of a lot of time for Ian. Uh, I just don't like Shelbourne. But it's, it's a big shame to see that they got beaten by Athlone instead of a Dundalk. Yeah, I mean, it was a great opportunity. We said it all week for Shelburne to get into a cup semi-final. Um, I do think there was probably, there was an element of, you know, they thought they had the game once. In yeah. Their head, to be honest. I think there was a lot of that in it. That said, when you look back at the game, it obviously finished 4-1 to Athlone. Um, there was an awful lot of chances in the game as well. It could have been 8-4. Like, Shelburne did have their chances. I look back at the highlights as well, Keane, after the match. And, um, you know, when Athlone were 2 1 up, Shelburne had chances to make it 2 2. I think Fernandez headed over the bar from very close yeah. range. It may have been him, I'm not sure, but, you know, that, that was a chance. And Miles did make some good saves, actually, for Athlone, particularly one for Kilduff. Um, that said, Athlone had, it looked like across the line for me in slow mo. Now, I can't blame the referee of the lines on there, because you can't give that unless you see that's over the line. But it looked like that could have been over the line, then it hit the post. I mean, you could go on all day with the chances. It, was, for, for, it was entertaining to watch. Obviously, for Shelburne fan, no. But it was, it was a fantastic game of football. Uh, it was a proper cup toy atmosphere. It was like, Athlone played it like a cup final and Shelburne played it like a friendly. And that's the way I look at it. And, you know, Shelburne would be disappointed. Uh, I think, personally, Ruth, I think if they play Bowles tomorrow in the cup, Shelburne win it. It's considering it was that long. I'm not going to say they were complacent, but that's the way it looked. Uh, I think they probably were, Keane, even if they didn't feel complacent. Like, a subconscious element to the yeah. back of your head. Look, they yeah. were sloppy, but they were sloppy, but I thought, even at 2 1, like a half time, I was like, there's no way I found a winning this. Even though shells were so sloppy, like, there was just, there was no way I found we're going to win this. And look, they won it. They're in the semi final of the cup. The one game might be the Aviva. Who knows? Funnily enough, the third goal they did give away Sherman was extremely sloppy, and that kind of killed them. I think yeah, it's, as well. it's shocking. Like, 
the, the manner in which you see the, they conceded the goals. It wasn't like Atlanta plays fantastic football and played right through them and scored. It wasn't like that. So that's a, that's a disappointing element. But this has been the story of Shelburne season for a long time now. They failed to put Harps away when at home. They failed to put Cork away at home. You know, they failed to put... Like, there, there you go. That's... They got two draws out of that. That next for four points now, and these could be talking about getting in Europe. That could cost them as well in the league because yeah. got, we'll go and talk about Finn Harps later. But like, there's two points between them. There's a game to go, so it could cost oh. them the league. It's an interesting last day of the season. Pads are Harper. okay, though. Pads are okay. And we'll get to them later as well. Um, just before we go on that loan, though, it's great as well because Adrian Carby actually signed a two-year extension to yeah. his contract at that loan. And the good thing about that, Keen, is you know they need a bit of stability. They need. If, there's a local feel about them now as well. I was looking at their team as well. I mean, the age profile of the players is unreal. You've 18, 19 year olds all over the side, don't you? It's yeah. unbelievable. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they actually do next season. I know they're still in the cup, obviously, yeah. the different bottom of the league, but I'm really looking forward to seeing if they can develop in the next two years under Adrian. It's a long time. It's going to be a long time before we see Avalon, let's say, pushing for promotion. In saying that, though, like, they, all, they only need an extra 10 points and all of a sudden they're in a playoff position. Now, this is going by this season's team. Like, uh, I, I do think with Adlon, this cup is the last chance of... Uh, always was. I knew since they got into it, I always said, look, they're focused on the cup. Mm. Uh, so, I, did, I, I, I do think now, like, if they were going to get into the playoffs with a the team they had, this year maybe it would be in it. Because of the half season and you now a couple of games, and all of a sudden they can find themselves in the position. But they they've been, they've had some really shocking and disappointing results. But I'm not taking that away. They're in the semi final of the cup. That one game away from the Aviva. Who knows what could happen? Yeah, they can look forward to playing Bohemians of Dundalk, which is going to be great for them, no matter who they play. Uh, on to another super game, which was basically the playoff quarter final as such really wasn't it first well you can say semi final essentially isn't it in the first division between U C D and Longford Town. U C D two Longford Town three. Another mad game and U C D be killing themselves here, Keen, before we get on to Longford because you know Whelan gave them the lead. Of course Longford equalised to Joe Gorman, but Madai gave them the lead in extra time with ten minutes yeah. to go. You can see the two goals the last seven minutes. Joe Gorman again with a header and Dean Byrne with an absolute scorcher to give them a, a 3-2 win. Um, how did you see this one? What a game. Uh, but first things first, I have to say, it's an absolute disgrace. I've always backed the FAI to the hilt lately, but it's an absolute disgrace to have these two games on the exact same time. Uh, yeah. Absolute disgrace. Like, this was a fantastic opportunity to have Shelbourne on at 2 o'clock, to have... Uh, UCD at four or five, and to, then to have the late game have Bray and Galway or something like that. Like, what a festival of football! What three fantastic games! That's the team that we didn't have a full program of Premier Division That's games. That's what yeah. I was thinking of myself. They didn't, have to, show them. They didn't yeah. even have to show them. We have them on at the same time. It's not really, uh, like you know, we're, we're trying to spread out games as much as possible here. That would have been a fantastic day of football, three unbelievable games. Uh, so I'm disappointed that they were on at the same time because Bray were only showing the game on Facebook Live. So it's an absolute disaster because you can't really watch them games back. They're difficult. Yeah, you can't watch them back exactly. But like I say, with the UCD Longford game and the Bray game, I was very disappointed that they didn't take the opportunity to actually show them on Watch LOI. Yeah, uh, uh, well, what I say is look, that wasn't the agreement. The agreement was we're going to show yes. on the other vision. So. Like, uh, I'm disappointed on our run as well, don't get me wrong, but like, that was that was the agreement. So, I thought now UCD done a fantastic job on the stream, and I loved it. Watched the, the commentary, absolutely fantastic. Everything about it. extra time for a few minutes, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I went off extra time, literally only for a couple of minutes, but I turned back on. And uh, to be honest, the only thing was probably everybody was on an extra time, that's why. Uh, Cruz were in the second half of extra time. Yeah, <laughs> so, so oh, see the goals. I have to say now, I thought uh, it just shows you the character in Longford. Gone behind twice. Uh, just they were horrible goals to give away, horrible goals. But 
they got it back, gone with two, and then what a what a strike to to win it like. And you hear the, I don't know if you're saying the commentary, but not the UCD commentary, the section of Sligo or uh, Longford commentary, and the squeals out of them. And it's you know that's what it's all about. Goals like that. That's why we go to games. That's why we follow our clubs. Oh, they're not there yet. Uh, they're really they're not there yet. They've another huge, huge, massive game against Galway. And look, I'm not even calling that. Don't even ask me to call that. But uh, I, I have to say, UCD be kicking themselves considering they were ahead twice. Uh, played the better of the football, and like to be honest, they'd be just good. But I think penalty shootout, like you know. I, at least, you I know. personally think it was a fantastic game. They're a great asset, UCD. I'm a big fan of UCD, but it's much more appealing watching Galway and Longford fight it out now than UCD and Galway. And now look, UCD. I'm not saying like they don't offer a great football. They don't offer a great game. They do. Oh. Not more to, in terms of the size of the clubs, really. Yeah, well, I would much prefer go to go, go to Sligo or Galway than go to UCD. Now, Pats and UCD, Pats don't always get the best results out there as well, so that does help me situation for Galway. Not saying we do any better than them two stadiums, either. <laughs> but, like, you know, I, I just think it, it, knows it broadens it out a little bit, the league, and, like, I, to be honest, I don't want to call. I don't want to call it. I really don't. We'll wait till uh, a few days to think yeah. of one. Anyway, Keen. Um, yeah, obviously, like for Dean Byrne, Keen, though, before we move off this game as well, because he has had injury problems as well. And obviously, I saw the little interview with um, with uh, Jamie Moore at the end, and he was very emotional. It's great when players like that get the rewards and they come back from the likes of injuries. It. So Look, it makes it worthwhile for them as well, doesn't it? He's had, he's had a tough time off the pitch and injuries and stuff like that. And... You know, them countless hours in the gym, them countless hours training on your own, recovering on your own, rehab on your own, and tell them countless hours, and it's worth every penny when you stick one in the top of things like that, and it's such an important game, and look, I swear to God, I was delighted, I'm a huge, huge fan of Derek Doyle, I think the work he does, and he's just, for myself, he's a young coach, and I love saying that. And you know, he's great ideas and he backs the players to the hilt. Uh, people giving out about him going to pitch stuff like that. I love that passion, I love it. Uh, are you talking about at the end of the game? Like, no, yeah. uh, when they scored, all right, yeah, but I mean, come on, 3 2, like last second yeah. when they when they scored, you ran on the pitch. Look, people will say, people will say it's a little bit premature to be doing that considering they have two games to play, but. Like you have to live in the moment. Uh, I do absolutely. Like honestly, that probably will never come around again. That moment again. So you need to just soak it in and enjoy it. And I love seeing the passion. I love seeing the joy in Dara's face at the end. Uh, he's a proud man. And look, I, I hope I do. I genuinely hope we see long for coming up this year. Quick word on UCD. Uh, do you think Andy Myers done a good job here this season? Yeah. Oh yeah. Look, without a doubt. Look at the squad they had. Let's say eighteen months ago to now, and uh, considering where they are in the league, absolutely superb job. I think he's the right man to take them on again next year. Uh, keep them there. They don't get rid. Of, they don't chop and change managers very really often either. So he will be there. He will get his time. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with in like with another side because I've no doubt. They're going to lose three or four, five of them players. I know Madai has been linked with. Um, I don't know what the situation is in college as such. If you get me, but he's been linked with Bohemians anyway. Um, he would be a player that would add to any team like that, really, wouldn't he? I think. Yeah, look, Madai, then you have Wade. You have, you have some top top players there. Collins, Kerrigan. Keane. Yeah, so it goes on and on. But I do, I genuinely think. Let's see what Handy does now. He's going to lose that squad, and it's tough. It really is tough, and you, you feel for people like that, that you're just after rebuilding your squad from losing all these top players, and that's what you're left with again. So, look, we're fair play to him. Fantastic job, but he's going to have to rebuild again. But I do think, overall, considering they were ahead twice, I think Longford deserved to win it with a character. 
absolutely. Uh, the other match was Bray Wonders, nil Galway United won. Waruhu scored on 81 minutes, and I tell you what, Keen, uh, Bray will be sick of the sight of Galway. I mean, a few weeks ago, they obviously lost the home to Galway, which proved critical in them finishing the second behind draw. Yeah. Uh, very later goal, actually. It was a goal in injury. 92nd minute. 92nd minute. Oh, and then they go and play oh. Galway. And then they go and end up having to play Galway in the playoffs as well. And they lose 1 0 at home again. Another late goal. Um, Shaw and Lynch weren't right for this game. They may have been on the bench, I'm not sure. But I know there, there were injury doubts coming in. So I think Doyle played up front. Isn't that right? Yeah. But uh, how did you see the game overall? It was disappointed. Opportunity missed from Bray again. Uh, they kind of half went for it. Uh, they kind of half went for it, and I get that, and I understand why. There's so much at stake here, so I kind of get why they didn't go all guns blazing. Do you think the fact that they lost the league title in the last day of the season psychologically played a little bit of an effect? Oh, oh, of course, you're going to be you're going to be doubting yourself, and then they're playing Galway of all teams again. So I've no doubt though that they had a well drilled side. They knew what they were going to do. And they obviously had a plan, but I just think Galway had a better plan. But I was even looking at the game when Galway scored. Like it took about four minutes, and they didn't have it. It took about four minutes before Bray actually kicked into gear again. It's like uh, the head's not. Yeah, but it took about four minutes. So they scored in what the eighty third minute or something like that. Eighty first, yeah, yeah. Eighty first, like, that's what I'm saying. They didn't. They don't. You don't have four minutes then to just mess about you need to just go for it like and you know I feel for the likes of Brian Marker when I'll pierce myself and you know I feel for a lot of people but that's what happens that's the playoffs like I said before it's disappointing to say but like everybody expects the team to go up once they hit the playoffs doesn't always be the case a lot of disappointed faces like everyone we've seen play during the weekend probably won't be in the Premier Division like. and you know you're looking at it and you're saying Jesus all this for nothing like you know what I mean but that's the way it is and that's how it feels for Bray at the minute I suppose from their point of view next season like I'm sure Gary Cronin will stay on he's done a fantastic job this season oh, actually yeah. let's, get it, let's get it right I mean last season they missed out in the playoffs they literally missed out by a point to draw there, who in many people's eyes were the favourites in the league uh, the recruitment looked good uh, Gary Shaw the likes of um, you know Aaron Barry these were key signings as well weren't they yeah, top signings. It'd be interesting to see now what what they do next year. Uh, a lot of these, obviously, they're only on one year. Well, I wouldn't even say one year contract. Forty week contracts, and it's a bit disappointing, like for Bray that end because obviously, if Arden Barry and Gary Shaw were to stay, they would really be in the Premier Division. So it's kind of like every two seasons you see now in the Premier in the Fourth Division, a team of signs a couple of, let's say, top players to try and get them out of the division. And then if it doesn't work out, it takes them a year just to regroup and then a year to go for it again. Do you think that they need to do something similar if they can, like draw it on? Because in the last few seasons, we talked about them before, Tim Clancy um, has built a squad there. They haven't really lost major players, haven't they not? They've kept no. all the young, good players. I think Bray, now it's easier said than done, and I'm sure they yeah. look to do it, but it's important that Bray can keep the bulk of that squad and hopefully hopefully add one or two good additions to that squad if they can do that they're going to be right up there with a great opportunity next season again yeah recruitment is a big thing in this league especially Lucas says it's not about it's not about these young players it's not about players for that's going to be great in two and three years time it's all about here and now in this league uh, like we've seen that Cork, like Cork City for example a team with absolute bags of potential, bags of players that are going to be players, if you know what I'm saying. And it doesn't work out because in this league, I said a hundred times on this before, it's all about right here, right now. You need to have your team to win this league right now. Like, you can have a season or two pushing for it, but realistically, you need to have the winners in their squad from day one. You kind of have a window of two, three seasons max if you can keep the squad together or yep. any squad together. I think in the first division now, obviously we're talking about here, and even um, in the Premier Division as well. You can go for that as well. You need to look, look, look. What it says you look at Cork City, them players, two, three years time, these players could be fantastic. 
just weren't oh, ready, let's be honest. For that's the it. See, that's the thing. In this league, you need to be ready. And Look, I'm not taking and to anything away from Galway, though. They sat in. I think they were happy enough to go to extra time with looks of it. Uh, now, just a lot of people are not giving Bray a lot of credit here, saying that Galway only had two days to prepare for this. Stuff like that. But, what, what did they mean by two days to prepare? I mean, in fairness, we talked about this before, Keith. There's no way that John Caulfield wasn't preparing for this no, match. Uh, they days. knew well before Tuesday night's game that they were going to be in the playoffs if Cole, yeah. if Cole didn't win. So yeah. John Caulfield was in training. The season wasn't over on, on Wednesday. They were in training. They were prepared for this. They knew what was coming. Uh, so... That I wouldn't use that. Like people are saying, look, that's disgraceful from Bray. Like they only came in, they didn't even know. But it's not like that. Hey, there's no way it's John Coffey and God where they're sitting twiddling their thumbs waiting no. for a decision. So <laughs> I, gen- I genuinely think they were trained, they were prepared, and yeah, it's just they were kind of happy to go to extra time. That's what I felt. I felt they were kind of happy to rest their case a little bit and maybe ride that look on the penalties because that's what it looked like. Oh, they just in the round. I would say in the round of seventy second, seventy third minute in that game, they just flicked the switch, and the toys started to change. God, we started getting a couple of chances. They started getting on top. They started getting a lot of the ball, and then they got the goal they needed. And then that was it. it was corned. They were just. It was just literally pull down the hatches and off you go. It's amazing that they're in the final now. I mean. The third, fourth week of August, Galway were second bottom of the league, Keen. Um, Look, he hasn't come in and changed any players. A few have left the club, actually, in the last few weeks. But he hasn't been able to do anything by recruitment. And um, yet, he's just, the whole place has lifted. And the I'm surprised as well to change a keeper again for this game. Yeah, that's interesting too, isn't it? And Very look, interesting. We don't know whether it's two games in, two games out. Uh, for... Unless he had a bit of an injury, we were unaware yeah. of. He's on the bench, so very odd, yeah, very odd, yeah. By the looks of things, to what he's doing there in the last couple, it's two games in, two games out. So he plays like, the final. Singer plays the final, so yeah. Singer plays this one. Bukhagan might play the next. Yeah, what if they win? The, oh, I tell you. So I don't know what's <laughs> going on there. And obviously, we'd have Slinger all day long. But, it's working so far, I guess. We can't really... Yeah, look, we can't. We can't fault Hogg, and he made a couple of big saves as well, so... Mm. I don't know. Absolutely. It's a classic stuff from Galway. Anyway, um, on to the league, Keane, and obviously only two games in the Premier Division, the league, this weekend. We have Pats and Dundalk, which is one all at Richmond Park. Dundalk are third and 26 points with a game to go. Pats are on 20 points. They have two games to go. Pats can technically still get into Europe, by the way. Um, an interesting match at Alkane. Funnily enough, the reverse fixture was also one all, and Huben gave them the lead, and Benson equalised. Yeah, both. I know. Yeah, I was only taking that myself in the way home. It's mad, isn't it? How do you see it overall? The, I'm the disappointed. I'm dis- very disappointed as a Pats fan now. Uh, before the game, if you said they're going to have a draw with Dundalk, you bite your hand off. Uh, in fairness, I well, called the right. I says that I says that I'm gonna go for a draw, but I'm more burdened towards the Pat to win on this one. Uh, I did say that, and uh, like I'm, I'm bitterly disappointed coming home. Like, and all the past players on that pitch were bitterly disappointed as well. Uh, that Dundalk team, I'm not taking anything away from them. What they're doing in Europe, etc. But tonight they were there for the taking. We had they them were, on a the plate. They were similar to Waterford the week before, weren't they, in all honesty? The performance yeah. against Waterford. But I think the big thing for Pats tonight was a lack of proper cutting edge. And let's be honest, they didn't have an actual striker. Like, no. literally, didn't have a striker. Well, we, we don't have one when Kelly can't play. So, you know, we, we had to resort to Gibbo front. And, um, you know, um, I don't want to be too critical of him. He... Got into a fantastic position, went around the cable, done the hard walk. Now, honestly, I was there. I happened, <laughs> I happened right in front of me, right? Now, every the about about five or six, I'm not defending them. We should have put it in the back of the net. But five or six done dog players just absolutely screaming at the top of their lungs, right? Sean Hoare's in the blade and go going absolute AWOL. 
and Gary Rogers is just, you know, being Gary Rogers. But <laughs> I, I, I do know he should have scored, but I can see why he missed it. He was out a little bit from the goal as well. And them shots, they're not, especially on a windy night, on a wet night, they're not as straightforward as people think. I think yeah. he made the wrong decision to try and round the keeper, though. I think the yeah. was there to actually hit it. Yeah, like, the, like Billy thing. King had a great chance, but like Dundalk scored against the run of play. There's no question about it. Uh, Pats had all the ball. Pats played. I think, I think Pats had the possession. I'd, I'd love to see the stats, but if yeah. I'm looking at, I would say it would be 65-24 or 65-24, something like that, because it was all Pats like. Uh, Pats were doing all the attacking. I, I, I was standing there. I was behind the goal, obviously. And I was just standing. I turned around to Clark here. I just how the how the hell are we losing this? Mm. Like we were honestly, we were so good in the first half and the second half. Mm. Uh, I, I did. I just thought we were good. I thought Birmingham was fantastic. And in fairness, he's got a stick. Of, he's got a fair few bits of stick, but Birmingham was very good. I thought McNally was really good at the back. Uh, Lee Desmond, fantastic headers out of him. Like, uh, oh, he's yeah. decent as well. Like Benson Forrest are pretty decent in the middle as well. Yeah. It's just a bit at the end. I thought Jamie King did well the first half, but yeah, King just got tired though. I could see. Ah, King. yeah. Look, Billy. Yeah. Billy has had his injury problems. Uh, first off, he, he was sharp. He was good. He in the never looks. He never looks one hundred percent fit at the minute. Uh, oh, honestly, I just need to say something here, and I've seen a lot of people slant. Uh, in Brian Gartland does no by no means least that man has finished that fella is an absolute engine like what a player Brian Gartland is and look oh because I remember him being linked with Pats at the start of this season and people were saying he's finished my god I'd have him there tomorrow now not all by Lee Desmond I'm just going to put that in there <laughs> he was outstanding in the game against Arsenal by the way yeah I've seen him play against Arsenal really good uh, but Dundalk didn't show up tonight. They were there for the take. And, uh, I don't think the five suits them, especially against a team like Pats. Mm. Uh, the five at the back, well, it's obviously three. Mm. But it's like three centre-halves, two wing-backs. But yeah. it, didn't, it didn't suit them. I don't think it suits them. Maybe in Europe it suits them. But that's a different ball game. Like. Uh, I just think they're better having Shields they're better having two out and out wingers. And, you know, they're better having Shields in front of the back four, two out and out wingers. Magellani in the 10. You know, it's like two proper prolific wingers who can get at the full wax, exploit them. And obviously. Kelly even would have been an addition today. Yeah, I so I, I, I'm not a fan of the way they played with the full wax. So I, I don't think. Look, Filippo's in the group stage of the Europa League. So what do we know? But. I'm saying to myself, like that was the wrong decision. They got her, he got her wrong tonight. Mm. Uh, uh, but as well, Could be satisfied, Keen, enough with the point. No, like, Dundalk. Do you not think? I think they will in the circumstances of going away to Arsenal yeah. and the fact yeah, that they'd, they'd, be, they'd be happy to get a point on the yeah. board. Yeah. Well, the way they played, mm. I would say that feels like a loss. Mm. I think, like I, I really do. I, like I'm not being hard on them just because you were playing Pats, but look. If they're making Pats look good, there's something wrong. Like, I, I genuinely think they're, they're not. They, they didn't just, they didn't turn up tonight. And it's, it just shows you, though, the quality they have in the squad, that they didn't turn up tonight and they got a point. Let's so, be honest, though, they haven't been firing all cylinders in the league all season, really, for the quality. No, they haven't. And, you know, they have to be disappointed. And they are bitterly disappointed. But I'm just, I'm really disappointed myself because, you know, I think Pats, Pats had them there. Like, even at 1 0, when they scored, like, I was saying to myself, we're going to win this. And at half time, I was saying, we're going to win this. I genuinely said it, look, and I should have put around the bookies, but I'm glad I didn't now. But, you know. I, I think I said, it, I said it somewhere, I said it a few times. I said, if Pats had Euban, they may have won that game. It's, they're just lacking that killer instinct for me. Yeah, look, I think every team's the same at the minute. Every team needs a striker. Look, Dundalk will probably say they need a striker because Euban isn't the one of them, really. So, you know, but that's the, that's the way it is. I don't think I don't think anyone has really... There's no striker in the league set the world alight this year. Uh, 
Like, I guess I suppose with Pat, it's not just about the striker, it's about the attacking trust as a whole. Like, you know the way Bohemians, if Andrew Wright, he mightn't score an awful lot, but they've got Grant and they've got... Well, I have to say, I think, yeah. I think we're getting it. I think we're getting it right. Uh, look, I'm not jumping through hoops after tonight uh, because after the way we played against Finn Harps, let's say, but... If you're jumping through hoops in a minute when we talk about Shamrock Rovers. Yeah, look, you know, I, I do. I just, I think we might... You know, we could, with that performance we had today, like I said, Pat's now all of a sudden, we'll go out now and get hockey down on Wednesday. But that's the that's the story of Pat's. That's the, Pat's have been like that, not only this year, but since 2015. We we put in a fantastic performance, and then we bottle it the next week. Well, I wouldn't say bottle it, but we just don't put her in. And it's the story, the story of the last couple of seasons, but... I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm disappointed. I was feeling that that we didn't get the win because, like, I don't think anyone would begrudge us that we deserved it. Yeah, I think so, and I definitely think Dundalk were there for the taking. Keen. Uh, on to Finn Harps, and I'm laughing here because obviously Finn Harps were beating two 0 home to Shamrock Rovers. The reason why I'm laughing, Keen, is because none of us said Rovers would win. So of course, they had to win, didn't they? Um, you know, it was a difficult match to watch. I have to say, look, the pitch yeah. wasn't. Rag order. Look, I'm not blaming anyone of Finn Harps or anything like that. I've I've mentioned it and oh. you take it personally or whatever. But look, you can only say what you see. And I think Jamie Moore mentioned it on the Watch LOI and got a bit of criticism for it. He said it was the worst pitch you've seen in a long time. But I mean, it was the worst pitch I've seen in a long time. Um, look, what can you do? It's not Finn Harps' fault necessarily, but for some reason the pitch, you know. It was a lot of rain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It wasn't in good condition. But from Shamrock Rovers' point of view, job done. I mean, they were missing four or five first teamers. Uh, O'Brien, scrappy goal. Murphy, decent enough goal. McGinley maybe could have done better actually with that. From fairness, he'd be the first to tell you. Mark McGinley is a good goalkeeper. But it puts Rovers obviously. Rovers, you know, forty-one points. If the champions, forty goals this season scored, seven against. Goal difference thirty-three. Keen. The next highest is Bowles with ten. I mean, that tells a lot in itself, doesn't it? Ah, yeah. Look, they've been the best side in the country for months. But on, I, I, do, I, th- I thought the pitch was horrendous, obviously. Uh, I, I think it kind of ruined the game as such. Uh, it just turned into a scrappy game. Like I was I was laughing, thinking, like, well, I was kind of delighted because my Pat's found that, like, all these players have to go home from Valley Buffet to Dublin. And they can't have a show. Like, how good is that? Good is, how is, good is that? <laughs> Could you imagine yourself, honestly, I'm trying to take myself out in the pitch there and be filthy, dirty, and not being able to actually have a show? Obviously, they'd get a towel or whatever, but there's nothing better than a shower, Keane, when you feel like that. Put it that way. I mean, it's horrendous. It's nobody's fault. It's the way it is, but it's horrendous that you can't have a shower. Well, really. Now, I think, it's, I think, I do, look, I'm delighted because it's Rovers, but. I, I, I do. I think it's I think it's a bit of a disgrace that players can sit in a bus together. Yeah, it's a bit weird, yeah. But, yeah. but they can't just jump in the shower together. But that sounds wrong. But you, you know, no, no, but, but I'm not being funny, but social distance in the shower. <laughs> I mean, the guy could stand over there, four or five lads in the shower. There's usually, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. five oh, in. I'm not saying social distancing in a lay of oil and ground for showering. Oh, my. Did you ever see the size of the showers? <laughs> uh, I, like, I, I haven't seen many of the showers it's like three in a cubicle oh well then yeah even yeah. that I think I'd rather go in one by one by one by one just to get a shower in a night like that yeah so uh, you know uh, that's that's another I think ridiculous rule to be honest but like all the players are being tested and everything so what's the difference yeah and as you say they travel up and down in the bus anyway and they're you know sitting beside I don't know now I have to say now I would say a couple of clubs like you know what I mean? Have had a shower, like, but like, all uh, hush hush. But I, I, I do. I, I think it's a. Uh, I find it mad that like they have to go home like that, like that. I, I remember a game and the showers weren't working. Uh, I don't know if you remember this now. It was the towers of fourteen. Pat's played Ballon and Mallard in the Santa Cup, right? It was Fatty's first game back. And do you remember the pitch that night? No, um, not really. Right. Was this in Bally in up there, wasn't it? Yeah. On, yeah. A, on a Monday night, right? Don't ask me how. I was getting... I had an iPod touch at the time, right? And I was trying to get Wi-Fi on the way up off buses and all that passed with boys, right? 
to make sure the game was going ahead. It was that bad. I genuinely, anyone that's looking at this, try and Google pictures from that game, right? It went ahead because it was a big day for Ballon and Maller getting into Santa Cup. But it's a small enough Irish League club, generally. Yeah, but my God, I never forget it. We won a one 0 thankfully. But I do remember the result and everything, but I don't remember the. I don't, oh, remember. don't ask me how it went ahead. The ball wouldn't even bounce, and it genuinely wouldn't bounce. Like Fatty just came back from playing Premier League football. <laughs> Probably turned around saying, what in the name of Jesus am I doing here? But I'd say every single Shamrock Rovers player felt the same tonight. That's why I brought it up. Because, you know, that's the first game back as champions. Uh, I like, look. I get credit, I suppose, Keane, because, you know, they didn't have to win. I know everyone keeps saying unbeaten, but they still didn't technically have to win. But they still rolled up their sleeves and won that game tonight. Against a Finn Harf team that have been playing well, on form, yeah. up Shelburne's Backside, they still are, by the way. Um, but you know what I mean, though. Like, you, yeah, no, you I, I think it's uh, it, see, just cup places, uh, cup final places up for grabs here. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Just, they're pushing for the cup. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, they they be wanting to win that. They be wanting to retain that cup, and they need players on form to get into that. Look, like, I thought a lot of the lads. I think nearly every player that came off the bench even today could play in that side, and you know what I mean. Like, it's just the depth in Dundalk and the depth in Sean McGrover's squads are frightening. Like, I, honestly, I was standing there tonight at the patch game, and I'll bring that back up, but this is just the strength and depth that I'm talking about, right? They're taking off, bleeding. Dan O'Clearly, one of the best centre halves of the league, right? I'm saying, to myself, all right, this is decent. Here comes bleeding Andy Boyle. You know what I mean? You're taking off Sean Gannon. Here comes Dummigan. You know, you're taking off you're taking off some top, top players, yeah. like. And they're coming, but that's the same with Sean McGrover's, like. They're taking off, like, Jack Boone wasn't even in the squad today. Roland Finn was back in the midfield. They did two different wing backs in Kavanaugh and yeah. Marshall, for example. Uh, who has played? Williams came into the side and played off instead of Burke. Uh, yeah. Played off, I done quite well actually, and played off Aaron Green. So you know, but that's what I'm saying. Like they have to strengthen depth, and that's the same with Dundalk. So I think, I think like credit to both. They don't get a lot of injuries, but they don't have that, and they don't have that strength and depth. Look, we always say how great Keith Long is. When you say they don't have the strength and depth, they don't have the strength and depth known to us. Yeah, like. Like we know, like Dan clearly coming off, Andy Boyle coming off. Dundalk and Rovers, yeah. Like, yeah. So I think we're going to see Dundalk and we're going to see Shamrock Rovers at the top for a while now. Uh, I do think they close the gap. It's not going to be as easy as it was this year. But look, credit to Shamrock Rovers. They dug deep. They got the win. Scrappy, mucky, just disgrace or for a game of football. But they got the win and. Look, credit to them, but hopefully they don't get out on Wednesday now. Do you think Finn Harfs to be disappointed with the performance overall, or do you just think that Rovers had a bit more quality overall generally? Or uh, Rovers had a lot more quality. Uh, they couldn't really show it a lot. Look, I don't, I don't want to keep hammering the pitch, but you couldn't show the quality on that. It was, it was scrappy, uh, but it shows you Rovers were scrappy against Derry. I remember uh, they've been scrappy oh. against Pats. They didn't get the result against Pats, but they were scrappy. They dug deep and they got the point. That that's the way. That's that's what I'm talking about. So they have a couple of sides to that game, and that's what you need as champions. And look, I, I'm not. I don't think they're going to go on and dominate for years and years and years to come. But at this minute in time, there's nobody stopping them. Yeah, absolutely. All right, lads, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much, Keane, and we'll see you next time for I suppose the preview show for the weekend's fixtures, which will be. Be the last fixtures, aren't you, Kane? Ah, don't upset me. <laughs>